Hi there, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Marketing the Invisible. I'm Tom Poland, beaming up to you from the very sunny Sunshine Coast here in Australia. Joined today by Chris Salem. Chris, g'day, a very warm welcome from down under. So where, where are you hanging out? Well, Tom, thank you so much for having me. I'm here in the New York City area of Connecticut, just about one hour, a little over an hour northeast of New York City. So you got the, the big smoke and you got the, the country cousins out there as well, have you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, to both worlds. Yes. Was, where was the Bridges of Madison County film? Was that Connecticut somewhere? Matt, well, you know, there is a Madison, Connecticut, believe it or not. But I don't know if Madison, if that movie was filmed in Connecticut. Maybe if no. it was, maybe I'm not I don't know. sure. It was, probably, it was probably filmed in New Zealand and they pretended it was in Yeah, Spain. yeah. Who knows? But, but we <laughs> anyway. do have a Madison, Connecticut. I, we, that, is a, that is a town in Connecticut. It, it is a thing. All right. So, um, yeah, it's the sort of place where you get a lot of country bridges and nostalgic, uh, whimsical <laughs> sets for movies. But off movies and on to you, um, for those of you who don't know, Chris, he's a business growth strategist. So he's got a weekly radio shows, um, sustainable success as part of the Voice of America Influencers channel. Um, he's been around, he's achieved some extraordinary things, uh, keynoting with some of the biggest names in the business. Uh, collaborating for books, all sorts of things. So Chris is a guy who really knows his stuff and has a lot of insight into business growth, both at a strategic level, but also at a tactical level. Chris, pleasure to have you on the show today. The title is How to Become a Trusted Advisor in Your Business. Our seven minutes is going to start now. Question number one, sir, who is your ideal client? Well, my ideal client is going to be someone that is open-minded, number one, meaning that they they know their business, they probably have a lot of experience, but are open to new ideas, ways that can better enhance what they're doing to work on their business rather than in it, and looking for new ways to implement processes and systems to make them more efficient, more productive, and create more valuable customer experiences. Perfect. Thank you for that. Question two, what's the problem you solve for them? Well, the problem I solve is exactly that. Whatever whatever could be better in their business, that may, could be revenue, that can be net profit margin, a combination of both, and how that, when compounded correctly, can now increase their business to that next level, increasing their business valuation. So the problem I solve is the actual problem that is the bottleneck to where they are and where they desire to be. Right, right. And so for that, there's some sort of diagnostic that you go involved, that, that you jump into. So what, given that you've got this holistic and, and therefore very sensible approach to business growth, because you're not just looking at the issue in silos, but you're looking at where the bottlenecks are, because that could be different to yeah. businesses. So question three, therefore, five and a half minutes left. What would you say the typical symptoms of your clients, what's going on in their business or their life that they're experiencing before they find your solution? Well, there's a lot of different things. There can be, obviously, their, their, their revenue is stagnant. It hasn't been growing. The net profit margin could be staying the same or worse, regressing yeah. compared to the average. There's low retention. There is, you know, a lack of communication. Obviously, you know, it impacts that retention issue. Maybe there's a higher absenteeism rate. And for, perhaps if you're looking at sales, that their lead gen to conversions has not increased. So thus meaning that their market dominating position or unique value proposition is not intact like they think it is. 98% of businesses think that, that they have that down packed when in reality, it doesn't reflect with the lead gen metrics and KPIs and conversions to boot. So those are the things that typically are the symptoms of the problems flat flat revenue right that, that's probably the big one and and, and kind of pin the tail on donkey guessing as to why it's flattened out but you're going to go in and apply a uh, a metric based analysis of that to find out where the real yeah. issues are you i mean you deal with people that are very growth orientated you know they've got established businesses they they want to keep growing they're frustrated that things aren't growing the way perhaps they used to what I'm getting at here is they're going to try stuff. Uh, four minutes left. What would you say the most common mistakes that people are that are that are making to, to trying to grow their revenue, but we're just flat out never going to work? 
Well, it comes down to either one first lack of awareness or ignorance in itself. They're not open to new ideas. They're so caught up in working in their business or in their role and duties and not being open to utilizing resources or leveraging their weaknesses with other people in systems that can that can uh, benefit them to pinpoint what these problems are instead of making these same mistakes over and over again, being open for help. So would, would you say that they sometimes put more staff on to try and solve the problem? Is that is that a common well, thing you see or boost? Well, it, could be, really? it, could, it could be that they could be utilizing the same people that are now leveraging their weaknesses rather than their strengths. They don't right. have the right people in, in, in harmony or, or certain processes to connect the dots to solve the, you know, to solve those mistakes. So, so, thus, so you, meaning right. that they keep repeating them. So you're also looking at the team members to see if they're playing to their strengths. Correct. Starts okay. from the inside out with the, with the leadership, engagement, communication, and getting that all intact. Yeah. And, and sometimes when you're actually in the business and you're interacting with these people day in, day out, and you perhaps have done for years, it's very easy to develop blind spots. So what? Let, let's flip it. We've got two and a half minutes left, so a world of time. What what would you what would you say would be a valuable free action that someone listening to this could take? It's not going to solve the whole problem, but it might take them a step in the right direction. I would say that first, you know, looking at you know, is their communication, you know, working or and or not working? Could it be better? Everything starts with strong communication, where it's not based on assumption and speculation, but when it's specific, clear, and concise. Making sure that they're having daily huddles to make sure that people are in alignment with what what has to be enhanced and worked on to, to be better. That 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 is a fabulous top tip. A daily huddle. How long is the huddle? 10, 15 minutes tops. And just around the room, what are your priorities today? What are you working around on? Around the room, what are your priorities for, for, for your rolling Jeez, duties that day? Wow, folks, that's kind of like a boom top tip. Now, you might have heard that before, but you've got to ask yourself, are you doing it? <laughs> thank, thank you, Chris. That, that, that's a beauty. Question six, what's, um, where can people go to find out more about what you do? A URL where they can go in and dive a bit deeper. Well, you can go to my main uh, homepage of my website, ChristopherSalem.com. And if you just scroll down slightly, you'll see a, 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 a section where you can put your name and email and we'll send you a free uh, secrets to becoming a paid speaker to 10x your business, specifically for business leaders and speak people that use speaking to grow their business. Interesting. So, so folks, um, ChristopherSalem.com, uh, scroll down about a third of the way down the page, exclusive free access today. Uh, opt into that and find out some more information from Christopher on how to grow your business. Uh, so that brings us uh, to uh, question seven, 35 seconds left. What's the one question I should have asked you but didn't? So what is the number one key revenue and profit strategy that businesses should look at first before deploying other revenue and pro net profit strategies? 20 seconds, I'd love to hear the answer. Well, I'll make it very simple. It is your unique market dominating position or unique value proposition. When that is in, in alignment with the audience you serve to, that, that aligns to the problem they have that they don't desire, speaks yep. to the results that they don't have but they do desire, that's what's going to come Perfect. first before you apply yep. your lead gen going forward. Such a great reminder and so easy to lose focus on that essential value proposition. Chris Salem, thanks so much for your time and your insights. Tom, thank you so much for, for having me on your show. Cheers. Thanks for checking out our Marketing the Invisible podcast. If you like what we're doing here, please head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate us, and leave us a review. It's very much appreciated. And if you want to generate five fresh leads in just five hours, then check out www.5hourchallenge.com.